Hi everyone, I'm Bob Hanrahan from Application Engineering at Texas Instruments. Since 2001, design engineers have been turning to the award-winning WebBench online design tools to help create single-circuit and system-level designs. TI's WebBench Design Center gives you powerful software tools that deliver customized power, lighting, filtering, clocking, and sensing design in a matter of seconds. Even with those early versions of WebBench, the industry was amazed at how easy it is to design a basic switching power supply, just simple inputs and outputs, and out comes a reliable design. Now, in the following years, the WebBench team has added features and enhanced functionality, including the ability to optimize a design by simply twisting a dial. Our ICs have come a long way since then, and so has WebBench yet it maintains its original intent to save a designer time and effort during design and analysis. Now, the tool not only provides a solution with a part, but it allows you to perform dozens of different designs using different devices and then compares the results in a matter of seconds. I remember the day when I had to go through the design process and compare multiple designs by hand to understand which one was best. And after two or three designs, we simply picked the best one, knowing another approach might be out there, but no more time, and who would really know? It's important to mention that WebBench has always been and continues to be an easy to use tool for the less experienced designers. But over time, the tool has grown significantly by giving us some optional advanced features, such as automatic compensation, and the ability to export a design to many different CAD tools. So let's create a quick design to show you what WebBench Power Designer has to offer, including a few of these newer advanced features. Let's start with a simple design problem, and we'll enter 11 to 30 volts, and we'll output the default 3.3 volts at 2 amps, and 50 degrees C. We hit Start Design, and the tool goes out and analyzes dozens of designs which match that criteria. The tool runs all the basic calculations on each design, including things such as efficiency, ripple noise, and even phase margin of the control loop. And the tool initially balances many trade-offs, which we have the ability to vary. Several years ago, we added this very simple to use optimizer dial, targeted towards smaller size, higher efficiency, and total cost. Now let's say we need a more efficient design, yet size is also somewhat important. I'll select the fourth setting. We're now recalculating and making specific changes to the designs, which include parameters such as PWM frequency, and the inductor size, which all relate back to the criteria you selected. So here in the lower right, we have a list of many different designs, all based on different ICs. In this case, the tool found over 100 possibilities. Now, different people work different ways, so we give you many options to filter the designs. Or you can keep it simple and just select the top highlighted design. Now, looking at the top of the GUI, we see various methods to filter designs, which include a specific feature or parameter or a desired performance level. For example, if you're designing where noise must be low, you can filter by only displaying the designs which operate below the required noise level. As an example, let's go ahead and select designs that have lower than about, say, 25 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak noise. Or you might want to select designs that have an adjustable PWM frequency. Or you might have a clock available that you want to lock to. WebBench provides a checkbox for each of these and more. Now keep in mind, this is all optional. I personally don't use filters very often. I like to keep it simple. Now, after that, you can sort in one of two ways. On the left, you have the 3D visualizer graph. 
It provides a great way to see all the designs represented by a bubble, where the x-axis is the efficiency, the y-axis is footprint size, and the diameter of each bubble represents the BOM price. Another way to sort is by simply clicking on the top of a column. If I click on the BOM cost, I've just sorted by the cost of the BOM for each design. And that's right, each design is fully priced with all components at a 1K quantity in real time. Now think about how long that would take you. A single design may take you a good part of a day, yet we just priced over 100 different designs in a matter of seconds. Now I'll select LM46002. I open the design by clicking here, which will provide much more detail about the design. Now here we have six windows, five of which can be expanded for closer viewing. On the top left, we have the chart window, where we can graph out many parameters over the full operating range. In the middle, we have the schematic. And down here, we have all of the operating values, including noise ripple and phase margin. Then next to that, we have the entire bill of materials. Up here, we have the optimizer window, which allows you to look at parameters with five different dial settings in a single view. On the left side, we have the ability to set some advanced design options, including the PWM frequency, the soft start timing, and the undervoltage lockout level, if available on the device you selected. In the lower right, we have the documentation window where you can create a complete PDF design file, or you can simply click the print button on the navigation bar near the top. Now this file includes the schematic, the BOM with costs, all calculations, and all design graphs. You can also share your design with your coworkers or someone here at TI via email by clicking on the Share Design button. Also by clicking on the sine wave up on the navigation bar, we open a full SPICE simulation environment, allowing you to analyze stability, startup, steady state, and transient conditions. The button next to that, you can open WebTherm a thermal simulation capability to highlight potential heat issues. Now a quick word about simulation. <clears throat> it's just that, it's a simulation, and I never trust a design based on simulation alone. Simulation tools provide a great head start and can mitigate problems reducing your overall design time. At the same time, it's important to prototype a design to ensure it meets all the performance criteria needed in your specific application. Incidentally, the team here at TI verifies all simulation models by comparing them to actual bench tests using TI evaluation boards. By the way, we've added an ability to analyze loop compensation and even create and export a schematic and PCB layout for your specific design in most popular CAD tools. We've also introduced the ability to edit and simulate a design. So you can see that the WebBench Power Designer is simple to use and yet also provides a very powerful capability for designers. If you haven't used WebBench, go give it a try. And if you haven't used it in a while, you should check it out again and see how it's growing and improving. Watch the in-depth follow-up to this video where I cover these advanced features and more. You can learn more at ti.com slash webbench where you'll get access to the webbench design and simulation tools, models, forums, and other design resources from TI. That'll wrap things up for this video. Thanks for watching.